Hey guys, this week on the Indie Mayhem Show, we talk with Jeremy Meyer of ProWrestlingTees.com and how all the wrestlers are getting into the t-shirt business. What happened at Battle Wars 2? Tables are involved. The war to settle the score between RWA and TNA Impact Wrestling here in uh, the Pittsburgh area and so much more from around the Indies. Stay tuned. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the oh. taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 87. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. is coming at you live from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. A little bit of video production stuff up here in the area with some local promotions, some local documentaries. Uh, a lot of fun stuff, uh, Indie Wrestling US specifically. Uh, with me, as usual, is my cohort, my compatriot, my co-host. He is Eamon Payton, at Eamon to please on the Twitter. That's the wrong screen. There he is. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in Austin, Texas. Currently coming at you from san antonio how you doing sir i'm doing fantastic sorg as always i'm uh, ready to talk indie wrestling and, and ready to to get in with another guest this week very excited for uh, this upcoming interview that's right that's right great guest coming up here uh, we'll get to that in one moment but first please go check out uh this and other shows over at wrestling mayhem show.com you can subscribe to this and everything else on video and audio on itunes and all kinds of different places uh please do that please share please subscribe please rate us uh, it, it really helps out if you're digging the conversations that we're having over here uh, and, and getting the word out. And you can also drop us a line. Let us know people you want us to talk to on the show. Questions if we've uh, announced who we're going to be talking to for the week uh, that you'd like to contribute. Uh, we have the hotline at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And you can also please even let us know just your thoughts, any indies you're checking out. Uh, we just kind of want it, it's hard for us to get a hold of everything we can here and we're trying to expand out as much as we can uh, and, and we hope you guys uh, can give us a hand with that. We've had some great emails here uh, in the past few weeks giving us an idea of uh, who we should maybe get on the show some conversations we should be having. We really do appreciate that. So uh, this week, again, we try to hit up all facets of independent pro wrestling and if you're in indie wrestling, if you're following a lot of these guys around here, you have heard the the name Pro Wrestling Tees. ProWrestlingTees.com uh, has become uh, synonymous I think with indie wrestling at this point uh if, if they're a big name it seems like they all have a store at this point i'm hearing great comments on twitter from even the wrestlers at this point uh so uh, i reached out to these guys a couple weeks ago and we got on the line right now jeremy meyer he's the head printer with pro wrestling uh, uh thank you for joining us jeremy uh, no problem i'm happy to be here awesome awesome so so you're into this uh, we like to kind of start off to get to know you a little bit because um, most people involved with pro wrestling uh, get to have some kind of love for you. you know, how how'd you get into it kind of thing? So what is your kind of earliest kind of memory of pro wrestling? Um, I watched pro wrestling a lot as a kid. Um, I was a WCW guy. Mm -hmm. So um, my neighbors, they would always watch it and have tapes of it. So I would go over and watch it with them and, uh, I was always kind of a big Sting fan, so I'm kind of enjoying what's going on now. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I watched it a lot as a kid and um, kind of flipped back and forth between WCW and WWF at the time. Uh, I kind of fell out of it around the time of WCW going out of business and then, you know, just kind of got busy with other things. And I actually came back into it in 2011 and, oddly enough, came back in through TNA. Wow. And then I just got really hooked back into wrestling and have kind of been catching up ever since on everything I missed and kind of just staying in touch with what's going on now. That's awesome. So, uh, pro, like I say, pro wrestling teams seems really kind of uh, prevalent. Like I said, uh, you know, with a great supporting podcast, independent promotions, a lot of wrestlers, a lot of people we've had on the show. Uh, they dropped a hey, check me out on pro wrestling tees when we talked to them. Um, how did pro wrestling tees kind of come about? Because you guys actually started, if I remember my history right, is one hour tees, correct? Yeah, and um, we still are one hour tees. It's mm -hmm. all kind of the same company. It's. Uh, just different parts of the business. Like we have one hour teas, we have pro wrestling teas, uh, barbershop window. We just launched uh, clothesline and uh, arm bar. So it's, it's all owned by the same company. It's just, we're branching out into other areas. Uh, and specifically with wrestling, 
Uh, we actually got into that through uh, Colt Cabana and CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Um, so CM Punk or uh, Colt actually contacted my boss Ryan Barkin and said, "Hey, you know, uh, CM Punk needs the shirt to wear on TV when he wore the I Broke Big Show's hand shirt." <laughs> so we printed that shirt and he wore it on TV. And that was kind of the beginning of the relationship. Um, mm-hmm. From that point uh, on, Colt was contacting my boss, you know, saying that he wanted to make some of his own shirts that he could go and sell at shows. And that kind of snowballed into what the business is now. In June of 2013, they officially launched Pro Wrestling Tees together. Wow. And Colt was basically had the idea of, you know, we, we can become the center for it. Uh, wrestling t-shirts for guys on the indies who don't really have that market right right and that's that is interesting it's actually i, I don't know if you're familiar uh, of mc front a lot he has a song he does with uh, i think mc lars if i remember and, and and they talk about even with uh, uh you know the rap game you're like well i want to be a rapper i didn't know i was going to be in the t-shirt business and i know i hear about uh, a lot of the guys locally that maybe aren't with you guys yet or maybe a little smart trying to figure out what's the best place to get a t-shirt right podcasters i hear the same discussion um so so it seems like you guys kind of like, uh, I don't want to say fell into, it just kind of presented itself before you, huh? Yeah, and I mean, you know, a lot of us there were already wrestling fans. Like, we knew Colt Cabana and everything coming in. You know, we didn't just know him because CM Punk shouted out his name on TV. Mm-hmm. So it, it was kind of just this serendipitous thing where like, oh, we're all wrestling fans already, and here's kind of a way to be in the wrestling business and at the same time help out a lot of these guys, you know? Mm-hmm. Like... Uh, indie wrestlers don't have the t-shirt stores that guys in WWE do and or they didn't have it and now they do like we've just allowed them to have another way to make money because a lot of these guys are out on the road all the time and it was just getting paid from shows and now they have another way to just bring in the money they can share the love with the fans and everybody loves a good wrestling t-shirt so it's kind of a situation where just everybody wins that's awesome that's awesome I know, like, and you guys are a little higher end than, like, I know I'm familiar with, you know, over the years doing websites and podcasts and everything, and just like, well, well, well how are we going to do T-shirts and everything? You know, there's cafe presses, there's spread shirts, there's the zazzles, stuff like that. And uh, you know, what makes uh, as far as a wrestler trying to do something online, uh, you guys different than maybe going through one of those kind of more, I don't want to say popular, mainstreamish kind of things like that. Um, Well, I mean, it kind of depends on where you're looking. The thing with us is all of our merchandise is officially licensed by the wrestler. We print shirts for wrestlers that we have signed to contract, whereas some people might just be printing shirts that, you know, might have to be taken down by somebody or maybe more of a parody thing, which we also kind of have too with Barbershop Window. Mm -hmm. But our shirts are all, all the stores are run by the wrestlers themselves and all of the money is being split between them and then we have a cut. So it's kind of a way of supporting your wrestler versus somebody who might just be putting up a shirt and just trying to capitalize on somebody else's name. Mm -hmm. Mm And all the designs, you know, they're all approved by the wrestler. So nothing in their store is something that they didn't handpick themselves. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so, I mean, what, when it comes to an indie wrestler that comes with you, is there any anything that they have to do to, uh, I guess, qualify? I, you guys have to have a lot of people kind of knock on your door wanting to get a shop up. Uh, yeah, we have a uh, form on the website. If you just go to, like, com, if you're an indie wrestler, you can look. There's a... Uh, like a start my store button or something. I can't remember exactly what yeah, it's Start said, your own store. Yeah. There's like a form. You, I'm sorry. Start your own store right there on the front page. Yeah. 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 So you just click that and then there's just like a form you can fill out. It's just kind of your basic information. And, um, the, um, one thing that is kind of the hurdle for some guys is they do require a certain amount of Twitter followers mm-hmm. because, you know, it is all promotion and, you know, we want to make sure somebody's actually going to be able to sell shirts. Right. Right, right. But, I mean, other than, other than that, it's just, you know, everybody submits their information and then Ryan will contact them. You know, if they don't meet the Twitter followers or maybe they're close enough, maybe they'll work something out. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it all, it's all going to go to Ryan eventually, and he's the one who kind of gets the contract actually out to the wrestler. But as far as submitting it, it's just right there on the website. Mm-hmm. 
So one thing that surprises me, uh, obviously, you, know, you guys have a lot of bigger names on there, but I'm also surprised to see guys like maybe Gold Dust or something like this. And maybe this is just a licensing thing I don't understand. Maybe you can clarify if you're able to. If you're not able to, to, to please tell me, uh, shut me down. But uh, but like yeah. I see guys like Gold Dust, and especially when he's in the WWE, like like in my mind, understanding the business as little as I do, WB is, seems like all encompassing when it comes to somebody like a character like Gold Dust. How is he able to have a store, or is it just like? He, he he owns his own name through some way back in the day or or how does how do those happen in that relationship especially since as big a people as you have on uh that's exactly what it is gold dust owns his own name mm. so we can actually make and i i'm actually i'm not even sure i think with gold dust it is just listed under dustin Rhodes. Mm-hmm. so in his example and with another example i use is kevin steen slash kevin owens right uh the Ooh. wwe owns kevin owens they don't own kevin steen and we have a pre-existing contract for kevin steen so you know legally we're completely legal to do so wow uh, same thing with gold dust we're printing dust and roads um and, and, and chris jericho is another example he owns his own name and cm punk like there was a time when WWE wasn't so keen on um, owning everybody's name. And it was kind of around, I think, 2007, 2008, when everyone started coming in. We're like, all right, we have to change your name so we can own it. Right. So right. CM Punk was one of those guys who kind of just made the cut of being able to still own his own name that he was using <laughs> on the Indies. So it's like there was a, there was a wire. <laughs> and they just, could, they just ducked <laughs> under it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like... They, they they become smart where they're like, if we're going to find somebody, we want to use a name that we can own. If they ever go anywhere else, they can't use it. Mm. You know, it, it may be unfortunate for those guys, but that's just the way they run their business, which is totally fine. And luckily for us, we can sign them, you know, under their real name or whatever, something that WWE doesn't own. And it's perfectly legal. Awesome. That's good to hear because I mean, I always worry about because uh, especially like early on, we had a lot of indie guys, and some of the first ones I remember popping up that were like bigger names, or you know, other than Cole Cabana, were Gold Dust, and, and and I always worry when I see something like, like oh, WWE is completely going to stamp this thing out, and obviously you guys have th- survived and thrived. Uh, we mentioned about uh, uh, some of the bigger names coming in. I know you guys have a lot of uh, it looks like deals with with the states uh, when it comes to Macho Man Andre the Giant, for instance. You have Stone Cold and 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 his Broken Skull Ranch stuff going on there. Obviously, CM Punk came to you guys after he left the Fed. Um, uh, what is it like working with uh, kind of the bigger names as opposed to the indies? And um, is that is that kind of propping up the indie guys by kind of exposing them a little bit? Um, I'm not entirely sure how much it's helping the indie guys. I think it mm-hmm. is because, like, when we get a lot of orders for, you know, some Steve Austin shirts, sometimes we might see, you know, like an Ace Steel or AJ Styles or, you know, they might be checking out just browsing the store. Cause, I mean, we do have a lot of cool designs and one on the front page might catch their eye. But, I mean, the first uh, big name we signed was Diamond Dallas Page, and that was kind of one of the things that allowed us to grow as big as we did because when you tell people – you're making shirts for time in Dallas page, you know, they can buy into the business, buy into the quality and believe you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we just try to deliver on that quality. But I mean, as far as pulling in a lot of these bigger name guys, it's been pretty awesome for everybody all around. Like, you know, it's kind of weird to believe I used to watch this guy on TV and now I'm (laughs) printing shirts and sending them to him and he's wearing them on like broken skull challenge or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, I, I you can watch this podcast on the WWE Network. I I actually personally printed the shirt he was wearing on that last podcast. Oh, that's cool. That's real. That's cool. That's really cool. I was actually going to ask something about that. Uh, as far as like names that are on pro wrestling tees and and people that you get to print shirts for, is there any people that kind of stick out as someone's your you you are huge fans of and and you know the thought of the the fact that you are printing shirts for them just really uh, amazes you. I mean, yeah, I mean, being a wrestling fan and not just being in awe that I'm printing shirts for someone like Steve Austin is awesome. And, I mean, CM Punk is, you know, especially being from the Chicago area, he's one of my favorite wrestlers. And not only do I get to print his shirts, but sometimes he might pop by the office or I actually got to go work with him at C2E2 and we sold shirts as he was doing his autograph sign. just got to hang out with him all day, you know? Mm-hmm. 
That's so, cool. I mean, it's really hard to like just sit back and be like, what is my life right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, what, what have, uh, I kind of wanted to know, uh, you know, obviously you have a lot of designs going through there and I know barbershop window, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, I know a couple of guys on, on our podcast team have a few of your shirts. Uh, but, uh, what, what is kind of your favorite design that's come up, whether it's be, uh, for a wrestler or something, uh, completely separate? Um, one of my favorite shirts on Barbershop is the Boo-Tista that has, like, the Super Mario <laughs> Brothers Boo Ghost. Uh, and that's we awesome. actually, we actually just started a new one that's Beauty and the Beast Incarnate, where it's the characters from Beauty and the Beast oh, when yes. getting her in German suplex. Yes. <laughs> which, literally, I printed the first one and was just, like, in tears laughing as I printed it. Some of these designs I don't see until I print it. And I, I don't know who did that one, but shout out to the artist. That one is there fantastic. It is. Here it is right here for you guys um, on the video feed. And, and you know, and, and your designs, especially Barbershop Window, these are the kind of things that uh, we, we have a Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And that's the thing where they just drop those designs in the group all the time and just have us cracking up uh, off of you guys. Yeah, some of the designs that come through Barbershop, like sometimes just like, oh, how did I not think of that? Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, some of these guys are just so talented and they come up with some of the funniest and smartiest designs. Hmm. And I just I, I can't even believe some of the stuff that comes through sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a question from the chat room. Our, our, our friend uh, uh, Antonio Garza down there in El Paso, uh, and I don't know if I know the entire context behind this, uh, but he he asked how important has the Young Bucks been for the company? I know they're big supporters of independent wrestling and saying we are independent wrestlers, and that's of course the article in the Rolling Stone kind of really cemented that. Um, they have to be big supporters uh, helping out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Young Bucks are great. Like, they're so appreciative of the business. And we actually were uh, at the ROH show that was in Chicago on just this last Saturday, and we're talking to them because they were there. So we got to go talk to them before the show and everything. And, um, I mean, they are one of our top sellers, so they do good business for us, and we have a great relationship with them. And, I mean, not even just them, them being with the Bullet Club in New Japan, it kind of kicks the sales up for all that, and everybody's just kind of making money all around. And they're just a couple of really nice guys, you know. Uh, hopefully get them into the store soon. They're one of the few that haven't really been by the store yet. Uh, we usually get a lot of people stopping in to check it out when they're coming through town. It's awesome. Hey, tell me about these new lines. So, so you first of all, the first one i got to mention, because um, I appreciate this, because I had the He-Man under ruse back in the day i I am (laughs) free to admit it when i was a i'm a child of the 80s uh but but what where the heck did you come up with the wrestle ruse was it just out of that love remembering that uh uh uh, kind of an era and and how do they do are are people picking up the wrestle ruse (laughs) yeah i mean the wrestle ruse are fairly new so the way that came about i'm not a hundred percent sure on this because i wasn't really involved with the deal right but i'm pretty sure they were a pre-existing company that didn't really have one that were wanting to do this stuff, but they didn't really have the license for it. And yeah. so they kind of came to us and I, I think we just picked them up basically. And uh, now we can use our licenses with the products and it's just opened up a whole new interesting business that a lot of people just seem to get a kick out of. And I personally think they're hilarious and adorable and they seem to be doing pretty well so far. And uh, I'm hoping to see some more designs for those in the future. I know we don't have a Macho Man one yet, which is kind of ridiculous, but hopefully we'll get one soon. But yeah, that seems to be something. It's, It's doing way better than I ever expected it would. I got I got a shout out to the uh, slobber knocker under ruse. That's pretty that's pretty impressive right there. <laughs> yeah, and like like the CM Punk ones look exactly like what he wore almost. So you know you get stuff like that. And I'm just hoping to get more of these wrestlers who did just wear kind of the underwear and just mm. kind of mimic their designs because who doesn't want to dress like their favorite wrestler in bed? Like again, like growing up with uh with like the the, the He Man versions of these, it's so great to see like a Hot Rod one or the Click. Or or AJ Styles yeah. or the British Bulldog. That's a nice classic one. Legion of Doom. Like I feel like the Legion of Doom Bulldog stuff I would have seen in the old WWE magazine, <laughs> like that catalog yeah. that came with it, right? Like I feel like like why did my mom get me some of these back in the day, right? So. Yeah, exactly. It definitely feels like a throwback product, and 
it's cool to see some of those current designs on there. Well, maybe some of those fans will start wearing them on the outside at indie shows, unfortunately. But <laughs> oh man, I, I can't wait! I would love to see that at an oh. indie show. If you, hey, if you're out there, hey Garza, uh, I want to see that next time you go to Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Make make sure you wear your hot rod underoos on the outside. So yeah, and if says, you do, take a picture and tweet it to us. Oh, I hope somebody does that completely. So okay, so it looks like um um clotheslined, and I'm sorry, what was the other one? Uh, arm bar. Arm, arm bar. bar apparel. So, oh, 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 I guess Armbar is your MMA line, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's basically pro wrestling tees for MMA, mm-hmm. and it's a new site, and so there's not a lot on there right now. So we do encourage you know anyone in MMA to go ahead and try to register on there, just like you would on pro wrestling tees. Mm-hmm. Is it? I mean, are you finding? Uh, I, I, and again, not terribly familiar with the MMA side of things, but I mean, obviously, there's some sort of kind of indie. MMA kind of level. I know we have some local stuff going on here. Um, it, it, when you get on that level, is there the do you do you find or maybe this is something you're discovering that there's a fan base as rabid as, as we find with our indie guys? Uh, I definitely think the MMA fan base is just as uh, pumped up and excited as a wrestling fan base. Uh, with the site being so new, it's kind of hard to speak to that. Mm-hmm. I can only speak for how many. Uh, arm bar orders we print and there's not like a ton of designs on there and there is one that a uh, popular design that's also on pro wrestling tees so i see that one come through pro wrestling tees a lot but not so much through arm bar yet and i think it's just because like it's still fairly new we don't have a lot of guys on there yet but i mm. definitely and i don't know how um mma contracts work versus licensing deals yet like if we could get someone like a ronda rousey on there and um she, if she owns her name, if she can do that, I have a feeling she would be able to. So I'm not 100 percent sure on that yet. But I think just once we get some more people signing up, we'll see it being just as booming as pro wrestling as well. That's good. And you do have, I mean, you do kind of. I love the legalize. I just saw the legalized MMA for New York. That's great. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, you do have probably stiffer competition because there is like you know affliction doing MMA wear and everything. Um, so it's got to be a little bit hot, hotter contested area, right? Yeah, there's definitely some competition there, but it's really no different from wrestling. There's tons of wrestling shirt competition out there, and you really just have to let the quality speak for itself. I mean, we've been doing a lot in the last year to improve the quality of our shirts and just, Mm -hmm. like, getting better equipment to get better prints and things like that, and we kind of hope that just stuff ends up speaking for itself. Yeah, uh, well, we got great stuff. Uh, everybody on on the team practically has uh, some of the shirts from you guys of our Wrestling Mayhem show stuff. Uh, it, it comes out amazing. I I I think my, some of my shirts are just kind of fading a little bit, but I seriously wear them like once a week so for for a couple years yeah. now. So so they've been through the paces, guys. Um, so and we yeah. always we always put you guys over great quality. The stuff looks good. It is better than if we did spread shirts and everything. Um, which we've done those over the years. We we still have a store with some of the other podcast stuff that's not wrestling related, obviously. Um, and and I, I definitely prefer snagging that shirt through you guys for anybody else, if anything. Um, mm-hmm. So if you're doing more broad podcasting at some point, I have a lot of people I can r- r- run your way. So. <laughs> uh, but you guys are doing great with the wrestling, of course. Uh, tell me about Clothesline Apparel. Uh, yeah, so Clothesline is our newly launched um, premium quality shirt uh, website. It's only a limited uh, number of wrestlers so far, like some of the more popular indie wrestlers, plus CM Punk. And, um, <laughs> these are just uh, better quality shirts and better prints, and the designs are all really great, uh, done by uh, Dave Bogart. He does nice. a lot of our designs. He's uh, done some really great work. And then we also have just kind of like some brand apparel shirts on there, like some that just say clothesline, like one inspired by Japan or mm-hmm. like a retro one. There's, oh, so there's definitely cool. some different designs to sort through. But so far, it's just a limited number of wrestlers, and they all have one design, and I, I think they're all really great. Um, and the funny thing is if you go to the website and look at the pictures, it's all of us who work there are modeling the shirts. So awesome. you can go look at the AJ Styles picture, and that's me modeling the AJ Styles shirt. Nice. Oh, where are you at? We're going to get a picture of you. I should have used this for your uh, main thing here. <laughs> I'll never find it now. <laughs> I'm in top sellers right now. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's awesome. That, I love to see that you guys are doing a bit of a diversity here um, and, and really splitting things out. That's great. That's awesome. Um, so what is, um, I was, was, we talked about the, the, the shirt. What, what's been the most interesting challenge in, in kind of building 
uh, something like this? I mean, I guess the biggest challenge really is just uh, ensuring the quality because sometimes we, you know, have some issues with our machines and oh, we yeah. have to get them fixed or whatever. And, you know, we end up having to go through periods where we have to throw out a bunch of shirts and reprint them just because, oh. like, we might have an issue. But, I mean, signing wrestlers might be another one where, like, we obviously want to sign everybody we can and maybe it's just hard to get a hold, like, uh, get a hold of some of these guys or maybe some of them just aren't convinced yet. And it's kind of like jumping through the hoops of sending them shirt samples and things like that to just kind of ensure them that it's worth getting on board with us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, so we like to end this out with uh, a little bit of, again, kind of, ad- <laughs> kind of adapting a little bit here because we're typically talking to wrestlers most of the time. Uh, but first of all, you know, what are you watching these days? Anybody uh, in particular or any, any brand in particular? I know you said you're catching up a little bit. Uh, yeah, um, since WrestleMania, I've kind of fallen off a little bit just because, like, I haven't really been interested in what's been going on in WWE, which is the thing I generally watch because it's the easiest to get a hold of. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. have the channel for TNA, so pretty much when they move to their new channel, I watch, like, the first episode and haven't really gone back. Um, I try to catch Ring of Honor when I have the chance. Again, I don't have that channel. I do check out some of the... Uh, episodes on their website or i'll pick up a dvd here and then um we do have a, a guy who works for us actually who has a wrestling company in chicago called freelance wrestling just give him a little plug it's actually as like far as indie wrestling goes just like the production value alone is something that i, I think it's one of the most impressive looking indie shows and it, it is kind of more of a rowdy show it happens in a bar late at night so you, you definitely get a little <laughs> rougher show but i i really enjoy some of the stuff they're doing i've been to a couple shows and uh you can, you can find some of their stuff on youtube actually if you just look at the freelance wrestling uh, freelance. But, uh, they're, as far as indie stuff they're definitely worth checking out they got some really interesting stuff going on there just the just the but, first um, peek uh i'll put up the website while you're talking here freelance wrestling.com if you guys are interested i'm loving the um they live style uh poster they got going on right now <laughs> yeah, so they they do one show a month, and every poster that they've been doing, I think over, for uh, I don't know how long they've been doing this, but they try to model it after a famous movie poster of some kind. And they live was definitely right after uh, the passing of Roddy Piper, mm-hmm. so that was kind of an easy choice for them. But yeah, I don't know if they have their older posters on their website, but uh, yeah, they definitely have been modeling them after movies, and some of them have been so good. Oh. Yeah, awesome look. I, I'm loving the visual style. Uh, just pulling up a really quick promo of uh, Matt Nix here with the promotion. So that's cool. Yeah, and he's he's actually the one who works with us, and uh, he, yeah, he's one of the people running the promotion. Great. Awesome. Anybody else and you're looking they at? They definitely have shirts on our website if anybody wants to pick up freelance shirts. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, any Anybody else you're looking at out there? Um, I mean, I, I try to catch up with New Japan. I, I really enjoy a lot of those guys. And uh, mm-hmm. ROH actually just announced that New Japan's coming uh, to Chicago in May. And uh, I'm real excited for that so I can get to see some of these guys live. Uh, Nakamura is obviously really great. Um, and as far as being like a TNA fan, I always like paying attention to whatever AJ Styles is doing, the Young Bucks. You know, those guys are always kind of catching my eye here and there. Um Aside from that stuff, just kind of like NXT, I think is maybe the most interesting thing going on right now. But I'm kind of wondering where they're going to be going with everybody, kind of the ones we all love moving up to the main roster. I'm kind of wondering how they're going to keep that interesting right now. Mm-hmm. So uh, typically at this point, we ask, what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? Uh, so uh, whether you can talk about uh, what's the worst, best and worst of working with indie wrestlers or the best and worst of working with the printing business, uh, I take it either way you want to, one of the each. One uh, be- well, one- I, mean, I mean, the best is getting to meet these guys and mm-hmm. like see how much they love our products and just seeing everyone else like, logging onto Twitter in the morning. I have a commute to work. So like, I'll just log onto Twitter and sort through and see like every morning there's generally people, you know, talking about our products, how much they love them or, you know, encouraging other people. Like we have a grab bag special going on right now where you can pay uh five ninety nine and get like a, just a random shirt for really cheap. And a lot of people are excited about that. So it's really cool to just log on in the morning and see everyone talking about it. 
And I mean, obviously the reverse of that, it really sucks seeing people talk crap about us, but Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of a business and, you know, we work our way through it and we feel our quality speaks for itself. The fans definitely have a voice and I feel like there's more positive out there than negative. So in the end, it just seems to work out. It was actually really great. Right before uh, a couple hours before we had this uh, uh, talk here, uh, one of our guys, Matt Carlin, emailed us and he was asking, "One of you guys got added uh, by uh, Pepper Parks? Was really putting you over? You guys just put a, together a store for him, it seems. And I think Cherry Bomb has some great stuff on there too. Hoping she's get better. I know she got hurt over the weekend with a collarbone injury. Yeah, uh, but and the- uh, we actually just put up a shirt that's uh, mm-hmm. going to the fund of helping her get better. So oh, she has a shirt awesome. on her website." If you purchase that shirt, which is a really funny design based on like the Operation Board game, uh, it's like, all going to helping her with her surgery. So that's great, and, and I love that. I love that it's it's um, uh, you know quick thinking like that. You guys are definitely very involved with social media. I know you guys are retweeting me every time I'm putting stuff out for the Mayhem Show, and I, I know we don't put push a lot of shirts out for the Mayhem Show, but I hope we're bringing a lot of people over at least to check out the indie wrestlers because that's uh, that's that's definitely what we're trying to do here. Uh, with this show and uh, I think we got the cherry bomb operation if you guys are on video here uh, right there that's an awesome shirt that's great <laughs> <laughs> but again, yeah that, that one just went up and I saw it on our Instagram and couldn't help but laugh at that that's great um, so awesome anything uh, anything coming up you want to talk about anything you want to plug right now obviously everything's pro wrestling to begin with right uh, yeah uh, I mean we have our Twitter it's pro wrestling TS so Pro Wrestling Tees, and then we're Pro Wrestling Tees on Instagram. Um, you can kind of find us on there. Uh, if you want to follow One Hour Tees on uh, Twitter as well, that is our boss and owner, Ryan. He recently, the last couple of days, have, has been experimenting around the office with Periscope. So you oh. might be able to see him on Periscope and uh, kind of walk around the office and see what it looks like and watch us print some shirts. Oh, what do we got? Frank taking the longest lunch break ever. Let's see what's going on. Here. I don't know if it's going to load. It's an older computer. Ah, oh, I can't replay it. Yeah, I can. Seven hours ago. <laughs> yeah, there you that go. Was from earlier today. What is um? Uh, what is uh, just the side last question? What does one hour tease do aside from wrestling? Do you have anything left outside of wrestling at this point? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, one hour tease is just basic t-shirt printing. You know, if you need t-shirts, hoodies. I mean, when you pretty much any clothing, will we can print on, we'll print on it. I mean, it's you. You can order online. It's a really easy uh, order form to work. And I mean, if you need custom T-shirts for pretty much anything, that's basically what One Hour Tees is for. Mm, and that you. was the that's the parent company. And then Pro Wrestling Tees is basically just a spin off of that, mm-hmm. which is just you know what you see on the website. Awesome, awesome. Everybody, bookmark mark them. Even if you're not ent- entirely in pro wrestling. And get some stuff out of them. Like I said, good quality stuff. I, I wear it all the time. I wear it to the office. I wear it to the the, the, the Sorgatron Media Studios uh, and make sure everybody gets to see them. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, <clears throat> start at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, please. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, support anything else on there. You're, you're not going to be disappointed in any of it. So thank you very much. We're going to go take a quick peek at what happened this past week in uh, Sorgatron Media Podcast. And we'll be right back talking about what's going on around the indies. It does amazing facial face detection. Really? Um, yeah. If, I don't know if you noticed when you did that, it actually put a ring around your face. Does it do it for the selfie? Yeah, it does do it on the selfie side. Um, okay. You can, if you hit that mode button, <laughs> it actually gives you all the different modes. You have a lot of selfies on your phone, Chilla. <laughs> and they're all uploaded to my Make Google sure you photos. post these later. <laughs> uh, we got the Battle Wars 2 event that's happening, which is the uh, the second of our events uh, featuring the stars of Chikara Pro Wrestling, and, and you'll be getting to come down for that. With the exception of like Chikara shows, which I absolutely love, this is probably my favorite place I've ever been. The crowds are absolutely amazing. Uh, the management is excellent. The company is very professionally run. Um, Austin was such a cool city. We got to roam around last time. I randomly met McLovin in the bar. By a man that has a master's degree in the science science way. He's, wait, 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 wait. If you're on video, so he's, he's holding this up to the camera. Look at these numbers. Look, he mathed this. He, like, white papered this thing. Look at this thing. Sorg, I scienced the f*** out of the Bellatron. Okay, okay. Now, now, right. okay. So the Bellatron is supposed to be a countdown to breaking the record of longest held... Thank you.
you so much to Jeremy Meyer from uh, from ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, a really good talk. I uh, hope we'll give a little bit of insight to the, the, the t-shirt biz uh, that, that's supporting a lot of the indie wrestlers out there. And it's great that they can diversify. Again, you know, these guys don't make a lot from the actual match. That's why you see them selling everything that they freaking can at the gimmick table some, sometimes because they need gas for back home, right? Uh, some people have mastered this. And uh, it's great to have somebody like Pro Wrestling Tees kind of help them out in that regard so uh amen you had a big weekend uh i've seen the tweets i've seen the videos coming through on sunday because i keep forgetting your shows are on sundays um they are until i see all the hubbub about your shows during the shows <laughs> to be quite <laughs> honest and it's, it's so awesome to see that, that that that's happening uh very authentically i know i, I actually i think that we were the video we're, we're about to talk about that we were just talking about before we came back on um i think i first saw from your buddy brandon stroud down there uh, with uh, with Inspire Pro, so uh, uh, tell me how Battle Wars Two went and how something went uh, uh, fairly viral. It seems. It it seems uh, Battle Wars Two. Uh, obviously, it's the sh- we mentioned it before. It's the most exciting show that we have all year because it's the Chikara Pro guys coming down. Um, this was the most fun I've ever had in professional wrestling for I would say since I started. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, really amazing things about the guys at Chikara Pro. Uh, it's not just a style that I love. It's not just that kind of sort of thing. Um, it's it, they, they are genuinely amazing people. I had the pleasure of spending most of the weekend with them. I, uh, I treated them to, uh, to a Texas Rangers game the night before. Got the barbecue. We, we hung out. It was um, it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, those guys are seriously spectacular. And uh, it carried over into the actual event, which was so amazing. Um, uh, this was probably the most fun we've ever had and, uh, as a wrestling show. And, put, and uh, it was funny. It was, you know, had some of, the most, some of the best wrestling we've ever put on. It was emotional. It was fantastic. Uh, this is a show I think people should definitely seek out when it comes out on DVD. Um, so much fun up and down the card. Uh, all the Chikara guys killed it in their matches. Uh, uh, some of the highlights, I guess I could say, Chuck Taylor versus Matthew Palmer is a match that everybody needs to see. It is so unbelievably amazing and funny and everything you expect it to be. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Athena and Jessica James... Uh, going at it was phenomenal. Uh, Athena announcing that uh, obviously she was wrapping up in a bunch of other companies. Uh, that was, uh, according to her, her last match on the independence, which that is a huge honor for us to be able to give that to her. And Jessica James is someone that she spent a lot of her time with uh, on the indies. Um, it was phenomenal. Uh, there was not a dry eye in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, obviously, Nothing's confirmed, confirmed, you know, whatever, but so happy for her and, and all this stuff that she's you know going to have going for her in the future. Um, definitely a very emotional night uh, in that retrospect. Uh, like I said, phenomenal wrestling and going to what Sorg was about to mention, uh, a match that many said stole the show and a match that I, I, I think really changed – was – such a surprising encounter on, on so many levels. I, I expected it to be really good, but not as good as it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was the, uh, the San Dima street fight between uh, Angela Slane and Delilah Doom, two friends of the show. Absolutely killed it. They were on a whole nother level in that match. Uh, the crowd gave them a standing ovation afterwards. Uh, it, was, it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, it was everything you love about, you know, I, it was everything you love about both characters, you know, Delilah Doom's quirkiness and, and her bubbly excitedness. Angela Lane's just badass, hardcore, no holds barred, just attitude, all meshing together and bringing a new side to each other, which was amazing. Uh, as, as Sorg is showing right there, Angela Lane you know, plummeting to the floor through that table was some, I, and, and we alluded to before, I don't think I've seen a video from Inspire Pro shared 
more times from so many different angles of fans catching this. This was, I, it was. It wait, wait! Was I love unbelievable. As I mentioned, the first angle I saw this was Brandon Stroud, and I realized that's him right there on the floor, right? Yeah. <laughs> like way in the back, because I'm looking at all these cameras, and I'm like, "Well, this is pro wrestling now," uh, and this is how stuff gets around, and this is how. Um, but it's so amazing because this is how people are finding you, right? Uh, AIW, uh, I've had discussions with people recently, AIW is doing this to a tremendous effect using social media, Vine, these videos, these Instagram, stuff like this. Um, because again, you're going to watch this over and over again. You're going to tell the people about it. You're going to go to the next wrestling show. You're going to go on the message board and be like, did you see this? Did you share this? Did you, did, what do you think about this? And plus this lady's doing insane stuff like this, right? On top of everything. And- yeah, I saw, you know, obviously after the show, I got to look through Twitter and stuff like that. So many people from outside of Texas, from just people who talk about indie wrestling, saying like, oh my God, did you see what Angelus Lane just did? You know, uh, you know, it, it was amazing. Those two women deserve all the praise in the world. Yeah. They um, are, I think, the future of independent women's wrestling. Uh, Angelus Lane is you know her passion comes through every time she wrestles and and same with delilah doom she's someone who we mentioned it before because we've had her on the show a few times such a great attitude and she definitely wants this very badly uh, as well as angela slay uh and yeah like i said they got a standing ovation of this is awesome chance uh uh it was i know very very important to both of them so it was really cool to be there for that for that moment um it was so fun. Such a fun show. Um, overall, up and down the card, everyone killed it. Um, I, I, I just don't have enough good things to say about this weekend. I, it took me like a couple days to recover from everything. Like It was just amazing. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Such good stuff going on right now. Great. Uh, InspireProWrestling.com. Uh, you guys have an ETA for uh, when, your video, when the show will be available? Uh, not an exact ETA. We're hoping to get, uh, in a few months or so is usually how we're, what we're shooting for. Yeah. Um, uh, but definitely when it comes out, you will have to, you will have to pick it up. Uh, because I mean, up and down that car, that's, there's stuff you don't want to miss. Uh, also, uh, Tag Cade, uh, is coming up November 1st. That's our next event. Uh, tag team tournament to credit our first ever tag team champions. First time we're ever doing a one night tournament, which will be really fun. Uh, and also, we announced at the uh, at Battle Wars that on that night it will be Ricky Starks versus Andy Dalton for the Inspire Pro Championship, two out of three falls. So that will be spectacular as well. So uh, all that information, tickets are at InspireProWrestling.com. Awesome, awesome. Go check that out. Uh, so there is wrestling locally. When is there not? Uh, there, there were two <laughs> oh, shows. There? there were two shows on Sunday in the in the greater area. Uh, one of them. Uh, shout out to friend of the show, G Raver. Uh, what? Oh, there was a. This was a Masada throws G Raver through a light tube match and threw light tubes on a table. On oh god, uh, so it's so. He, he, he sent me this because he knows I like when G Raver does absolutely insane stuff, and I love the slow mo in it as well. So uh, VOW yeah. doing insane stuff uh, as usual. Uh, making a name for those. I know they're on. They're coming up on if they haven't already. Uh, Smart Mark Video. Uh, so so look out for them on there. And of course we have a lot of their stuff over at IndieWrestling.us as well. Um, even to the point like this was his the picture um, after his match with Masada apparently. If, if I have my info right. And yeah, it's a little red. Yeah, I yeah. was like, oh, we got a weird paint job going on. No, that's not what's happening there. Nope. Uh, uh, G Raver, you crazy bastard. I appreciate you, but man, jeez. <laughs> you know my feelings on hardcore wrestling but uh <laughs> <laughs> um but no the, it, it, it's cool he's doing stuff apparently he likes it i hope he likes it um and he's got a really cool facebook uh, uh deal going on there yep yeah, that sounds so I, I don't that sounds so demeaning when i said it that way that's not what i mean <laughs> well you guys do a little facebook thing going on no awesome he's doing great stuff um so can we talk about the, the war that's happening in the backyard? The war to settle the score. And I'm not talking about the raccoons in my backyard that keep getting in my trash. Not that war. Not that war. I'm talking about what's going to happen down south of Pittsburgh here. Down south. 
And I'm not, not talking about the way too many wrestling promotions going on. Actually, I am talking about the way too many pro wrestling promotions. What do we got? Can I can I name them? Can I name them? Hey, let's let's. We need a big board, okay? We need a Pittsburgh wrestling big board, right? Uh, five star wrestling. Cross that off the list, right? We got our international wrestling cartel. We got a Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Yeah, they're kind of greater Pittsburgh. They're about an hour away, but you know it, it's still the area, right? Uh, we have uh, Black Diamond Wrestling. They're in West Virginia, technically, but they're still within driving distance. To what I meant, what did I not mention? Uh, RWA. We got uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Express happening in McKeesport. I want to mention mostly south of Pittsburgh too. Um, and now we have the new Code Red Wrestling. We had uh, our fellow from Bar Jitsu, uh, the belt being defended there at their first show uh, down at the Century Three Mall uh, this past weekend. By all counts, talked to talked to our good friend Sarah Feeney a little bit online. Said the show went amazing. Uh, so good luck to them in that. Um, but there's some more people moving in. Did you, did, Eamon, Did you think that we had enough? Apparently not. There's more. I heard of this dude. This small, this small little uh, up and comer coming in apparently this weekend. Yeah, there's there's, 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 there's this weekend, but first of course next weekend we got some some company called Ring of Honor is going to be in the area, uh, playing down in California, playing yeah down in California University, uh, California PA here again about an hour away. Uh, wheels his backyard actually, literally his backyard. Like like he can he can wheel his ass over there. You know I, I'm pretty sure he's he's he's, <laughs> he's hanging out at, 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 at the university like every Monday night. So. Uh, I'm watching your periscopes, buddy. Uh, but anyways, uh, then some dinky little company called TNA Wrestling uh, is going to be here, uh, and they're going to be. I'm going. You know, I've been saying this is about five miles. I want to Google Map this thing. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Bet. What was a raw Ross Raver? Ross Raver Ice Gardens is where TNA is going to pay play. <laughs> they're going to pay all right. Uh, which is oh. where <laughs> I've seen a couple shows from Ring of Honor there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So uh, we're gonna go to our Google Maps, and uh, yeah, this is this is captivating stuff over here. Uh, and then we're gonna get directions from uh, West Newton Gymnasium. Okay. All right. We're gonna do that thing. I should have showed this because ten minutes away. Wow. 5.7 miles. 4.9. I I was right. I was dead on the average there. About five miles. Uh. So yeah, five miles away. You're gonna That's have crazy. TNA wrestling, and I don't even know what's on the card. Doesn't even matter. I know our buddy, our buddy um, um, Zima Shima. I don't know. I couldn't remember which name to call him today. Uh, <laughs> he, has, he has so many of them. Uh, he, he's gonna be. I, I believe he's on the card. I've heard. Uh, but uh, there's that. Uh, they're gonna be there. Same night, Saturday night, but down the road, because they're shaking in their boots. TNA. Because down the road, uh, we have the comeback of uh, Global Force Wrestling's Sanjay Dutt <laughs> against Amazing Red for the Cruiserweight Championship. Plus the stars. I mean, it's really fitting. Plus the fantastic stars, of course, of the Renegade Wrestling Alliance up and down that car. Jesse Bell Smothers, Ashton Amherst, etc., etc. Uh, so... This is an interesting thing, and and I edited the show last week uh, because I was not at RWA for the last two months, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm editing the show, and a part that we didn't get into the DVD was uh, the little bit of rah rah that happened at the beginning of the show, uh, where uh, Doctor Feelbad really laying out the war says, uh, they're, "They're we're not canceling. We don't care. It's TNA, uh, more or less." And uh, who's coming back next week? And who's I, I, well, hope he did say who's bringing a friend. Um, so, so I'm really interested to see one, what's the turnout <laughs> going to be, what's the turnout going to be for RWA. They, uh, were pushing, if not over 300, this last show, which they said was the biggest August. Wait a minute. They said that was the biggest August. They had Matt Hardy a year ago and they outdrew mm. that if, uh, wheels. If you're in there, let me know if my numbers are right. But uh, yeah, I'm waiting for that. There's a delay on YouTube. What's up? Um, <laughs> which so they're already uh, doing well, okay? As as far as that goes, as far as the, their numbers, as far as they're going, um, and now they have this. I really feel, I really feel the story that's going to come out of Saturday night is RWA. This dinky, no respect, no disrespect. This dinky small town wrestling fed. Uh, is going to outdraw Impact Wrestling. 
There's a good chance of that. I have never heard. I haven't heard anything uh, uh, about anybody buzzing about a local show. I have plenty of people come up and say, hey, I'm going to Ring of Honor. We heard earlier Chachi's going to go to his first Ring of Honor show when they come to town next week. Nobody's interested in TNA. What? You know, sure, you know. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think it's going to be very empty in that building. Well, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. They nowhere near fill the building for Ring of Honor either. Uh, and yeah. I've seen other indie shows that haven't done great in that building. It's a, it's a hockey rink, basically. Uh, so you're not failing it, period. Uh, the WWE might be able to. WWE, I think, has run, when they did the ECW um, revival, uh, they ran some shows there. And I think they did very well there, uh, if I, from what I heard. But uh, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I Have you guys had this in Texas? This it seems we, like an, a very interesting phenomenon. And it's like it seems like once in a lifetime phenomenon here going on. We've never ran that close to an event like a TNA show. I know uh, we ran, ran against a TNA pay-per-view that was in Dallas. And, and we did still very well. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I think that speaks more to TNA that there's just not a viable threat anymore. And, you know, they're a fraction of what they used to be. Um, but no, I mean, people will find, will go to what they figure to be best, you know, uh, the mark, because even though you're indie, it doesn't limit the fact that, uh, a, section of of fans uh of paying fans will choose with their dollar what they prefer to what they prefer to have Mm -hmm. you know and if even if they are 10 minutes away from each other you know a a company that's on television you know Mm -hmm. television destination america uh that doesn't guarantee anything you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um and i think i i I think, I think it was demonstrated a couple of weeks ago. I think we talked about it on this show that both IWC and RWA ran, ran against each other. They're a little further, like more like 10, uh, 15 minutes down the road from each other. Uh, but again, RWA headlined by the farewell match for G Raver against Jason Gorey, both friends of the show, of course, uh, versus a headliner of a steel cage match between Rhino and Tommy Dreamer. And both had a record, if not near record, for, for the month uh, uh, draws. Mm-hmm. which was very interesting. And you see in that case, people made their choice, you know? Um, and, and I do also think both shows offered a very different flavor. Both shows have their fan base. The RWA fans aren't going up the road. The only time I ever see RWA people is when they're up in Meadville and they have Ric Flair, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. Like that that's how big of a draw it has to be for them to draw away from their hometown promotion that they're like like you know rwa always says they're family you know and uh and i think that kind of illustrates that point to a really grand effect uh, i don't think you're just going to see a lot of people peel off from the rwa crowd and go to tna i really don't i really don't yeah. so um but very fortunately got sanjay dutt back that night so um i think that's going to be a big draw for that uh, he's the fans are just nuts for him down there and i think it's gonna be really really cool so uh, but yeah, uh, so, so, uh, we reporting on that. Look for the Twitters, look for everything else. And, um, if you are a crazy person going to TNA, I want to hear how it is. I want to hear how that draw it is. I want to hear what's going on down there. If you, if you happen to be doing that, I can't think of anybody that's like, yeah, TNA, you know, it just, uh, wheels actually, who again is in the area says he has not seen flyers around there mm. for TNA. Well, okay. Wheels. Have you seen them for our uh, ring of honor? I'm curious down in California. How are they doing? So as we were speaking on Wrestling Mayhem show earlier, it's like, you know, why isn't Ring of Honor doing better with numbers in butts and seats than they are? But I don't know. All right. Uh, on that point, so as I mentioned, um, we have a friend, mainstream Matt, Matt Carlins. Uh, he made a little bit of noise last week on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, a little article talking about uh, with a former head head of security for the WWE. Of course, there's a lot of stuff going on there. But he's also started a new uh, article, weekly blog, over on IndieWrestling.us. Of course, where a lot of our friends uh, are, you can find in, in digital formats and DVDs. Uh, a lot of feds, IWC, RWA, 605 Wrestling in Ohio, VOW, uh, Prime Wrestling, some of the best ofs there, of course. 
Um, love to talk to Inspire Wrestling at some point, but they got a great deal with Smart Mark, of course. Uh, but anyways, uh, but uh, he does a great around the indies, and we talked about a little bit of this. We touched on a few of these. Of course, uh, he's got a bit going on with uh, 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 Women's Wrestling Uncensored. Of course, uh, Athena, uh, her fellow world from that company, even though you know her final, of course, was with you guys in Inspire. The uh, we talked about earlier, Cherry Bombs injury, uh, and that great T-shirt they have going on. Um, and that was so sad. It was one of those horrible Instagrams where I saw. It was, I'm, I'm a fan. I've seen her, of course, here with the IWC and some other groups in the area, and uh, mm-hmm. definitely one to follow. And uh, and sad to see that that that, that she's she's hurt. For that and taking out of the game, hopefully not for too too long. Um, of I course, believe, uh, I don't know what the official word from her was, but I know the injury because the collarbone injury. I think people would say it's usually takes around like four to six weeks. So I don't think she'll miss a significant well, cool. amount of time. That's I know cool. she'll be missing, unfortunately, the upcoming Shimmer uh, wow. events, which is unfortunate. But uh, yeah, so uh, definitely uh, <laughs> not not great stuff there. But uh, all, all well was just the cherry bomb because yeah, she is a mm. fantastic, uh, fantastic wrestler. Of course, a lot of featured uh, uh, images and videos. Uh, yet another angle of this table spot uh, from Inspire Pro's uh, uh, Battle Wars 2. There you go. I think that's the fourth one on this show and some other great stuff. Uh, Ricky Starks, uh, another great move. Um, somebody over there. Uh, AIW featured this weekend. Uh, our friend Johnny Gar- Gargano, attention promoters. I draw really well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I love that. Uh, and uh, some other great stuff. Uh, Tony Nice eating booty like groceries from uh, King of Wrestling or Pro Wrestling Syndicate. I'm sorry. Uh, so some great stuff going on there. Uh, sorry, I, I just kind of got stuck on a second. Uh, but no, no, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I've actually been really loving with uh, what uh, Matt Carnes has been delivering. So if anyone checks out Indie Wrestling US and wants to get caught up on on just some of the stuff going on in the Indie Wrestling world and get a good brief of everything that's happened, uh, that's a good place to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, some great stuff. Uh, 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 other highlights include Vampiro going back to uh, 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 Toronto for Super Kicked up there. Dylan mm-hmm. Bostic also a part of that, a friend of the show, doing some great stuff here in the area as well. He's getting around a bit. I'm, I'm, I love seeing that. There's a view from uh, Vampiro in Toronto and Queen Street. Uh, APW featured Bayshore Blast. Uh, a little bit of video going on there. Is this the entire show I'm looking at here? Yeah, they are the entire show, so go check that out uh, nice. while you still can. I don't know what the deal is there. Smash Res- Wrestling and, of course, VOW's Lord of Anarchy Deathmatch Tournament uh, in Fairmount, West Virginia, West Virginia, which I think is that where that clip came from I was talking about. Uh, Matt Tremont winning the first annual. He's getting everywhere, man. Uh, friend of the show, great to see. He's getting some great success there as well. Uh, so uh, go check that out, uh, IndieWrestling.us slash blog. Wow. Amen. I think that's all the indie wrestling fit to talk about. I'm hoarse. I feel like we've made up for any of these short shows we've been doing recently. No, definitely. I feel that. I feel that's all we've uh, all we got in the tank after after this weekend. Yeah, I'm. Woo. I'm. <laughs> I'm. I'm glad to have gotten all the indie wrestling I can out 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 in the open tonight. Oh yes, it's all out in the open. It's out of the closet. Wait, that's not right. Indie wrestling. Uh, <laughs> it feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? Uh, a little bit. Hey, Eamon, it's great to geek out with you once again. Go check him out, Eamon, too, please. He's a voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling and Inspire Pro Rests and on the Twitters as well. And check that out. I'm at Sorgatron, and check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. It's non-wrestling as well as wrestling. Uh, and um, uh, not indie wrestling, but we, uh, we're we at Wizard World uh, Pittsburgh Comic Con, uh, where both Paige and Dean Ambrose of the WWE were there. Uh, we were periscoping. The video's not too great, but the audio is fun to listen to. Paige, I thought, was very interesting. And I still need to listen to the last 10 minutes after I had to leave and go film another uh, uh, panel, actually. Uh, so definitely a bit of a wrestling, uh, presence there. And I know we saw some friends, uh, Chris Maverick. Have we had Mav on this show? He was on the, on the old show, right? We haven't had him. On, I don't believe we've had him on, on, on this one. Show, no. Uh, so plug out there, look up cosmic Hellcats, great web comic and, and comic series in general. Um, and, and, uh, you, if you like pictures of ladies, he does that too. Uh, so who go, doesn't? Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. We all do. <laughs> For the most part. Um, but, uh, yeah, that and, um, yeah, that's all I got for this week. WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, 412-206-WMS0. 
If you want us to let us know about the Indian wrestling we're missing, I think we covered a lot of it. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, uh, of course, subscribe, comment, check us on the social medias. Just look at whatever your social media is. We're not there. Tell us why we're. Uh, tell us why we should be on the social media. All the <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Uh, please support me. Oh. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>